Welcome back to Golden Aesthetics. This is Artemis Dolgan. Dude, I fucking, I miss this podcast. I swear to God, man, I should focus really on it a lot more because I love to talk and then I have a lot to say. Um, but I'm, 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 I, I fell in love with surfing recently. Dude, I fell, I fell in love with surfing a long time ago, but since I was bodybuilding, and you know what? When I moved to California, I was like, man, I'm going to surf every day, but I didn't surf until now, man. I fucking didn't surf at all because I was just bodybuilding, putting on weight. It's fucking the last thing you want to do. Get in a fucking cold water, especially, dude, it was... It's, it's, it's not a pleasant experience, you know, I was like getting up early at 5 a.m., driving to the ocean, it's dark, wet, foggy, gray, the ocean is ice cold, you know, you got to paddle out, oh, fuck that. And, um, you know, first time I saw surfing, it was, I was a kid, obviously, like somewhere on TV, and it always seemed like something unreachable, something that is going to happen to me when I die and go to heaven, you know what I mean? Because it was so privileged, you know, I'm from a fucking poor little fucking town, and, um, and then I saw surfing when I was living in Missouri. I was going to Lindenwood University and I was in a computer lab uh, doing some homework and I came across a YouTube video, uh, Isolate by Bender, I think that's the band. Um, there was Laird Hamilton riding big giant waves and I couldn't believe it. I was like, holy shit, dude, I booked a ticket to San Diego. I worked for three months construction job, painting houses, because I wanted to pick up surfing. I, I wanted to rent a board and um, I wanted to go surf. And I did that. I saved money. I bought a ticket. I was staying in Banana Bungalow on Pacific Beach in uh, San Diego. I was like 23 or something. And uh, I already grew my hair because I want to be a surfer dude. You know, and that's what's like uh, the movie Surfer Dude came out around that time with Matthew McConaughey, I think maybe a little later or something like that. And um, I was so in love with the lifestyle and then surfing like seemed so beautiful. But when I tried it for the first time, it was the nastiest shit. I didn't like it. It was hard as fuck. And... Um, I started doing surfing again when I lived in Miami, so I would drive to Cocoa Beach, and that's when I could get got a hang of it. You know, I, I became really decent in catching waves. I can I could nose ride, and then uh, when I moved to LA, you know, in Chicago, I started bodybuilding. Obviously, there was no there was no surfing, so I never really picked it up. But when I moved here, it wasn't really a, a thing, and um, I mean it was, but I was just really obsessed with bodybuilding, and that's what it was. And just recently, like a few months ago, I started getting back into it, and I got a hang of it again. And I've been writing a lot. I've been I've been waking up every single morning, and you know I'm gonna make a whole video blog, you know, about surfing because this is a very dynamic movement. This is a very dynamic muscle, and um, this is great cardio. This is great conditioning and functional training for your for your shoulders, and just for your body in general, you know. And and it's such a spiritual experience when I'm out there in the ocean. I feel free, you know. When I see dolphins in the morning, you know jumping out of the water when you're riding a wave looking at the sunrise i think this is the most beautiful and the most spiritual thing you will ever see what we experience boys you know you know me for quite some time i've been doing things bodybuilding and um you know a lot of you listen to me because of that but i'm transcending i'm growing i'm an open-minded individual and um i think that was that allowed me to grow you know and this this film that, I mean, this film, this, this, this whole video, this whole podcast, I wanted to, you know, call the art of not giving a fuck, you know, because it's truly one of the most important things in life. And this is one of the most important things to really fulfill your potential and become the best version of you. You know, whatever you want to be doing, I think the art of not giving a fuck is absolutely essential because, um, you know, I, I, the opinion of others will, will hold you back you know, from being who you are, from being who you're supposed to be. And most of the time, um, we submit to those opinions because it, it's a lot more comfortable. You don't cause any trouble, you don't cause any noise, you just go through life, you do a little thing, and you have a little job, you have a career, you know, have a vacation, you meet a sweetheart, you fall in love, and you die, and you have kids, which is a great thing. Maybe it's, um, you know, it's one of the greatest elements, you know, to have a family with someone you love and provide them with a beautiful life, absolutely. But, you know, producing another, you know, material for the system, you know, another slave for the system, it's not something that I want to do. It's not necessarily what majority of people do, but um, in my opinion, you know, I want to give my, my, my children a better education, a better, fuller life. And for that matter, I'm transcending, I'm growing, I'm, improv I'm improving as a human being, as an individual, as a man, you know. And, you know, there's a lot of people asking me, like, you, you know, in, in, in Russia, it's a lot more difficult to express yourself. And I think um, the person that I am today is because of um, 
um, that resistance that I oppose on, on, on the environment where I grew up because a lot of people were laughing at me because of my fashion, because of my style, because of my, uh, my way of self-expression. And um, it shaped my character, it shaped my will, it shaped who I am today, it shaped my confidence because it takes balls to be who you are. It takes balls to express and, and do whatever you want despite what other people tell you. You know, it's, it's easy to be a product of positive feedback. You know, when people are clapping and saying, man, you rock, you're going to do more of that. But it's not necessarily who you are. You know, it's taking the critics, it's taking the heat. That's what's really personality is, is made of. And um, I did it all my life. You know, even in the fitness industry, I'm an outcast. You know, I do whatever I fuck want. I don't sell supplements. I tell people the truth. You know, I don't really fake anything to, to sell you anything. You know, I make the coolest fucking clothing that people knock off and I produce it in, in Los Angeles despite of our fucking raw materials going up by 30% because of current administration and inflation rates that are fucking gonna drown our country. I stay loyal to, to my visions and I stay loyal to my ideology. And uh, that takes true leadership. It takes true confidence. It takes true character not to bend and to adjust you know, to what society wants you to be, to what industry wants you to be, what trends want you to be, to what sales want you to be. You know, it takes a lot of character to really remain loyal to your style, you know, despite what's trending, despite what people like. And, um, you know, that's why fake people loved and, and real people I hated. That's why fake people have a lot of people around them and real ones have very few. And um, I think that's what truly defines, you know, a true character and true person that lives congruently, you know, with his mind, with his spirit, with his, with his soul. And I think this is a true essence of freedom, to be able to express yourself without really giving a fuck who or what has to say about you, what comment they have to say to make about you. And um, that gives you um, a necessary strength and power to elevate yourself above average and to become an icon, to become whoever you want to be and to have profession or hobby or do whatever you want with your life, you know? And, and that's what I've been doing um, all my life, basically. I've, I, you know, it's such a crazy journey when you really follow your heart despite, um, you know, a general expectation, you know, a social expectation. And you make some crazy choices that people you know, laugh at you for and try to insult you for and humble you for and gossip and, um, you know, make up stories and, and you just go on this wonderful adventure, you know, sincere adventure and you're so much more in touch with the universe, you're so much more in touch with life, you're so much more in touch with the environment, with nature, you celebrate and feel freedom on such a great extent that you don't find happiness and you don't find the sense of accomplishment in acquiring materialistic things. You know, you just don't give a fuck. You're just you at every single moment, at every single, you know, event. You, you just remain you. You remain yourself. And, um, you know, I'm a free person. I feel freedom every single day. I feel freedom to do whatever I want. You know, definitely have responsibilities and hustle that has to, you know, pay for a lot of things that, that I enjoy. But um, despite all that, I am a free person. When I pedal out there in the ocean, you know, or climb the mountain and ride my bicycle or run out there or box or do whatever things, the things that I love, you know, I feel free, you know, because I was able to uh, really arrange my life and it took me a long while, you know, to, and it's not easy, you know, it's not easy. I don't live a lavish lifestyle, but I feel, I feel, I feel like I live a lifestyle where I feel, um, stressless you know I, even though i have you know the hustle to take care of responsibilities bills taxes business prices people you know raw materials die houses video edits you know content this that you know my training all that stuff you know i handle a whole, a whole lot of shit, but i'm not stressing at all because when i'm, I'm out there in those elements um of wilderness you know and, and those perfect moments you know when you're kind of on the edge um I feel endlessly happy, completely detached from social expectations, for social norms, you know, what people think, say, whatever. I don't give a fuck, you know. And, and when it comes down to developing your own personal style, when it comes down to developing your own personal swag, if you follow um, 
the trends without definitely experimenting, you know, without people laugh at you, you will never really develop your own thing. You know, usually people follow the pattern of what they see is um, acknowledged and popularized by majority, right? We have like icons, oh, that's the guy, that's the guy, what, and then everybody's going to wear what this guy is wearing because majority of people think, all oh, this is the shit, right? And if you really follow all the, just the, those successful, let's say, trends, and the only thing you're looking for is um, validation from people, you will never develop this fact. You gotta go and take, you gotta be able to take the heat. You know, you gotta be able to take criticism and chew through it and spit it out and still be yourself and still wear the hat you wanna wear. You still, you wanna paint nails, fucking paint nails. Who gives a fuck, you know? Some people like, it, it, you know, in Russia it's a lot worse, but here people also say like, something about my nails. Like, I, just, I just wanted to paint them black, dude. Who gives a fuck, I'm still a man. I still can fucking whoop your ass. I can still be who I am, you know, and, and, and that's it. And then, and it, you know, it, some people in tribes, you know, paint their nails and paint their fucking eyebrows and it doesn't make them less of a man. You know, I think the, the whole essence of, of manhood is the ability of, of self-expression, limitless self-expression without harming someone else's freedom, you know, and, and I think this is the the greatest art of all for all of you, you know, for developing your own style, for developing your own and creating your own reality, creating your own world, becoming a leader, not a sheep. Because I mean, this world is, you know, separated on 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 people who create and people who consume. And if you don't create, you most likely consume, you know, and. I'm here for people who try to create. I want to create leaders. I don't want to create followers. I don't give a fuck, really. You know, of course, like, you know, everybody has an ego and we want millions of views and we want, you know, all the fame and everybody writing us comments how cool we are and we want to be popping and we want to be the center of attention and we're going to have all the sponsorship and money and drive nice cars. But it's such a trade-off, you know? of being who you really are, making an impact, not an impression, making an impact. And uh, I'd rather make a positive impact on you because I live a very, um, as I said, very independent life. And um, a lot of time I pick isolation and I pick um, being alone over, you know, loud companies and parties and going out and spending time with these people and those people and, you know, uh, I, I feel like I have a craft that I really want to focus on and become great. And it's a lot of things. This craft is a lot of things put together, you know, because I'm not one thing, I'm many things. And I've been like this all my life. I've been going around from one hobby to another, trying to find myself and see, okay, I'm going to be this, I'm going to be that. And, you know, and I was like, oh my God, it's just it's not who I am. Now I have to move forward and, and look for another hobby. But they all come along because when you follow your heart, it takes you where you belong and you might necessarily be this thing or that thing, but it's gonna take you to the next level, it's gonna make you meet different people, they're gonna present different opportunities and it's gonna shape a whole different future for you. But you know, we gotta have the balls, you know, to take the chances and take criticism and take the heat and be who you are and express yourself freely because this is this essence of freedom. And uh, I'm, I'm really sharing with you something that I personally went through you know, something I personally go through. Um, I'm an artist, you know, even my approach to bodybuilding and the sport, I mean, nobody ever, you know, until this day, nobody creates the art pieces that I've put together when I was like really heavy into bodybuilding, you know, never brought people together the way I did. And those people were just not ready to comprehend what I'm all about, you know. Usually artists are misunderstood and they are driven simply by passion, by love to the art, to the craft, and not to validation, not to what other people like and not what other people click. You know, I don't do beta thing and, you know, click baits and all that shit. Like, this is, you're chasing the clout. And majority of the people nowadays, they chase the clout. And I've met a lot of people like that that I work with. That was like, man, I want to be with this company because, you know, what? Well, because you're looking for the clout. You know, you're not here for self-expression. You're here to create. You're not here to be a leader. Because be a leader is a fucking sacrifice. It's fucking, takes a long, long, long time and long grind, you know, in isolation, you know, when nobody's watching, nobody's cheering, when nobody's supporting, when nobody's commenting, you're just putting stuff out, you keep creating regardless. 
because you don't give a fuck. You're obsessed with what you do. And you're not chasing the cloud. You don't want to be a part of this fucking some fake shit, you know. And um, real things are very hard to find these days. You know, there are some real people. There are some solid individuals. But the majority is people chasing the cloud, you know. And it's a new thing. It's something that, you know, our society is becoming. And it's, it's actually weird to look at the whole situation. I cannot help but not to get a fucking politics, to be honest with you, because um, America is not what it used to be. You can, do, you can be a conspiracy, not conspiracy, liberal, conservative. You, we all can agree that America is not the same America as it was 15 years ago or America in the 80s or 90s. It's a whole different world. And people that run it, I feel like they're bad as fuck, you know? I mean, it's big tech for you, you know. E even me being on this platform and now talking to them is also kind of fucking weird, because they're the ones that are censoring. They're the ones who are controlling. They're the ones who are enforcing. They're the ones who are watching, monitoring, and all that. They're programming us, and it's hard to see because I always look at America as a free country, you know. And even right now, I try to remain a, a, a free man, you know, not depending on what people th say, think, what they click on. I'm just being me, living my own life, creating my own things, bringing to my reality, my own reality what I want, what I like, what I love, what makes me happy. And, um, you know, I kind of drew a, a very solid line, you know, but I told you before, you know, what I can control and what I can't. But it's still, you know, very depressing uh, because it affects my business, you know, what's happening in, in, in our country. The inflation, um, the, 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 the cost of raw materials is going up, the... The labor is going up, even though nobody wants to work because people are getting paid, you know, $16 an hour to stay home. Who wants to go to work, you know? And they let the government, you know, take care of them, and instead they take the job and they listen to what the government has to tell them, and they accept it as a only valid truth. And this is sad because this is not a capitalistic society. This is not free society. This is not the America that I love. And as I said before, I'm a free man. I was born a free man, I will die a free man, and my life is free. And that's what I'm sharing with you, my little freedom. You know, because this is the essence of life for humanity. And uh, I feel like there is less and less of it, and they try to put a leash around my neck. It ain't gonna happen. I'm not the type of guy, I'm not gonna submit. You know, and I wanna share with you um, the essence of madhood. And give you this energy and gives you some of my perspective on, on life, because I went through a lot of my life, I went through a lot of rejection. I went through a lot of resistance. I went through a lot of, you know, gossips and, and people pointing fingers in my back and laughing at me. I went through all that, you know, and it's not a pleasant thing to do, but I can't thank enough of them because I am where I am and my quality of life is improving and the quality of my life improved, you know, from who I was back in a little town in the middle of nowhere and to where I went now to be able to surf every day and, you know, see the beautiful skies and jump out of airplanes and ride bicycles and being out in the desert and, do some really cool shit, you know, and I'm, I'm flying to Washington, um, I think Friday, to do some wing walking, you know, you walk on top of a plane, and this is the most fascinating shit I've ever seen in my life. I want to ride a bull, I want to swim with the great whites, which is not real, I saw a great white shark, I was like, yeah, it's okay, I mean, okay, there's a shark. You know, I like more of a action type of thing, you know what I mean, where it's just fucking, Adrenaline rush, because uh, when you're up there in the ocean, you're just floating, and you like look at the shark, and you're like, oh my God, it's a shark, right? But when you climb on top of a plane, there's a lot more that goes through your fucking mind, because you have to maneuver yourself and stay stable, and there's a lot more to the game, you know? So um, I have a very long bucket list, you know, and I'm going to travel the world and do all the crazy stunts, but this is uh, on my bucket list, and wing walking has always fascinated me since the day I saw it. And uh, I'm going to do this in Washington for my birthday. I'm going to be 37. Um, and it's crazy that, I mean, I definitely can sense that my body is not as useful as it was because there's certain aches, you know, and you wake up and you just feel tighter, you know, muscle density becomes a lot harder and, and, and pulls in the, on the tendons and the joints a lot more, so you have to stretch a lot more. And I'm like, fuck, man, everything, the lack of stretching and the lack of flexibility is catching up, so I have to do a lot more, you know, maintenance work. But on the inside, I feel the same 21-year-old kid. And I'm, I think I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to die like that, too. You know, I'm going to die young, as old as possible, you know, as late as possible. 
and I think this is the essence of my life personally, to die as young, as old as possible. Um, and I think what keeps me young is this freedom, you know, an absolute um, ability to do whatever I want, anytime I want. You know, this is the video I wanted to dedicate to all of you and, and, and um, just tell you, don't give a fuck about who anybody has to say. You know, there was, a, um, when I was starting out this company, I, I just like, those are like the most recent vivid moments, you know, that, that went through this kind of shame from people, you know, because I used to be modeling my own clothes. I still couldn't do. But um, I would put the tripod and I'll put the camera on it and it'll be on the corner of Slauson and like Maine or Central, right? Like by the graffiti or whatever, they're taking a picture of mine. They're still there on my Instagram. And uh, there would be fucking Mexicans pass by and then all these kind of people, you know, in Slauson, like in East LA. And they'll be laughing and honking out of their cars and, you know, pointing the fingers and, and um, I don't give a fuck, man. Like, I was making money, I was creating my own world, I was creating my own reality, I was having a great fucking time and not giving a fuck who anybody has to say. Of course, like, it just, you know, it's like, man, fuck you. You know, what the fuck is your problem? You know, but I didn't, in the end of the day, I didn't really pay attention and I just kept doing my thing and I'm where I'm at now because of that. And um, I think my major responsibility in this life is to pass on my, my wisdom, my knowledge, and I'm, I feel like I'm really good at it. You know, I feel like I'm really good at talking, and um, that's something that I want to do regardless of what anybody has to say or I'm going to get any views or anybody going to fucking watch this video. I'm still going to say what I have to say because I enjoy doing that. And I think that's what really has to become the major source of your inspiration is what you want to do. You know, and just keep doing it every single day until you really get somewhere. And if you don't, I'm pretty sure you'll find another way. Artemis Dolgan, Common Sense.